Hi folks, welcome to another Craig's Hack for Tableau. Today is a big day on the Australian racing carnival calendar. We've got four big group one races uh, at Randwick. You can see by the prize money there, there's millions of dollars up the stake. So to celebrate, I'm going to resurrect my Craig's bet, Tableau Viz. And uh, I wanna take you through uh, what is Craig's bet? Uh, what data do I wanna grab to put that into my viz and how I get a hold of the URLs and then I scrape those URLs uh, using an import.io. So I'll show you all of that. And then uh, last two steps is how I clean and enrich that data using the Alteryx tool. And then I'll wrap up by showing you what uh, it all looks like and how it comes together into a Craig's Bet Tableau dashboard. So what is Craig's Bet? Let's have a look. So Craig's Bet, if you search it on Google, on the second top of the list there. So there you see, there's a, there's a public uh, Tableau viz, and this one's from a while back. And it shows you all of the horses in a race, all of the KPIs in terms of what odds, uh, what weight the horse is carrying, what barrier it's jumping from, how old the horse is, how much money is it's won, career wins and, and places and so on. So this is the uh, the old version and uh, I'm going to take you through how I um, resurrected it, enhanced it, and used an entirely new data set. So let's go and see what kind of data we need to get a hold of that one. So if I go to racenet.com and I go to forms and field, you can see the races that are going to uh, be on today and there's our Randwick uh, races and we have a look at uh, say Randwick race 7 today the data is all sitting behind this uh, website here in racenet.com so here we see race 7 this is the kind of data they want to grab so I want to find out um, the, the race name how long the race is uh, even the prize money, what time it starts, uh, what day it starts, and these are all of the horses. So there's a whole lot of rich data here in a semi-tabular way. And the, <clears throat> the also for each one of these horses, there's even richer data in this forms tab. So you can see for this particular horse, you can see its career starts and how many times it's won. You can see uh, things like um, the last 12 months uh, race history. You can see how well this jockey and horse combination have done. Uh, and you can see all these good bits of information right down to when was its last uh, run. So let's have a crack at, at scraping that data uh, using an import.io tool. But before we do that, I need to find out some URLs uh, to pull this data from. So if we have a look, um, if we were to have a look at it, behind the scenes here, there's, there's quite a lot of HTML with all of this data in. Unfortunately, this data is in here. Um, only the URLs uh, up here are buried in this. So let's go and find out how we would grab a hold of this, this data, uh, the, the URL part. Okay, so let's get a hold of these URLs. So I'm going to use Alteryx tool and uh, this workflow here downloads the, uh, the, the resnet.com field and compiles a list of URLs. So here's the URL that I'm grabbing. So there's the parent URL, the racing form guide. And if I download that uh, web page using the download tool, there's 1.2 megabytes of data. Uh, you know, when we put it into rows, it's actually almost 6,000 rows of HTML. So what do we need to do to get out the out URLs of interest? So uh, we, we do a fair few things there. We, um, we, we do a filter to keep just the rows with URLs in. We do a bit of cleaning, we do a bit of parsing. Uh, we get 408 different race candidate rows there. Um, and this is, this data is um, back on racenet.com. It has races for not just for today, but it's got several days into the future. So we need to find out what today is. We bring that into the flow and we keep uh, only today's races. So there's 168 different URLs of interest there. And we summarize those out and you can see Here's the tracks uh, that the races are, are being run at. There's the, the count of the tracks. 
whole bunch of them there. Um, so which ones do we want? We don't want all of those. We've only got a certain amount of uh, URL credits on our scraper. So these are the list of tracks that I would like to have a look at. And there's, uh, there's Randwick. <clears throat> so when we ran this uh, flow earlier, we joined that, that uh, tracks of interest back into the flow and we get a final list of uh, 27 uh, race URLs. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's, here's the URL. So without doing too much other than just pressing play on my workflow, I now have all these nice juicy URLs to send off to my uh, web crawler and extract all of that good information. So th this URL is for the uh, fields and this URL with just the form on the end is, uh, is uh, for the form scrape. So today we're going to get uh, eight races from Ascot, nine races from Morfittville, and ten races from Randwick. So we've got a hold of our URLs. So how do we we uh, go and extract that data using import.io? So let's go and have a look at uh, import.io. So here's a two extractors that I've created. This one's called RaceNet Fields. This one's called RaceNet Horse Form. So let's go and have a look at the fields one first. So if we uh, edit this um, URL ex extractor, we can have a look at how it all hangs together. <clears throat> so we feed a, a URL, and this is the last time I ran it. Uh, you can see these are all the different columns. So there's the track column, and we trained this extractor to go and look for uh, a track in this particular part of the page. And then there's the track condition, and it found heavy eight, and there's race length, there it is over there, 1200 meters, and so on. There's the prize, the race date time, the race name, and here's where we get tricky. We start doing one to minis now. So we've got uh, the horse uh, barrier and numbers. You can see there's a, that's a multi field. So we're grabbing uh, the import IO is tricky enough to grab each of the, one of those as one block of data, all the way out to the end of the table here finally collecting the odds for each horse. So how did that uh, go? Last time we ran that, I'll show you what it actually pulls out. So if you can have a look at the um, uh, the, the data here, it's, it's nice and, and tabular. It brings it all in. You know, we've got a little bit of passing to do here and we've got a bit of cleaning of, uh, of strings into numbers. So let's go back to the extractors give you a quick look at the other one this is a race horse form and last time i ran it you can see there's 27 urls let's have a look at what actually the data looks like so it went and scraped the uh, the horse form so let's uh let's open that up and have a look so here we are so this is what the uh, the data looks like in its raw form you can see here is the URL. There's the, the list of horses. See how it's got a one, a one row per race and it's actually uh, passed or separated all of those horses with semicolons. So there's the career stats, uh, the earnings, and you can see that we've got, you know, if we go all the way out to the end of the spreadsheet, we've got right out to column AB. So there's tons of good data to go on and use, but there's a fair bit of work involved in passing all of that. So uh, let's have a look at that next. So we're going to show you how we clean and enrich that data using Alteryx. So here we are at the uh, Alteryx tool. This one's called RaceNet uh, Fields. And we've got a, a couple of different uh, inputs on this one. We've got the, the two results from those two extractors. So this one here is the, uh, the RaceNet Fields. This is what it looks like raw. So it, it brings in the URLs. It's got that, that top header row is the, uh, the actual race details and then one row for every horse in each race and you can see that that uh, that data there has got lots of uh, um, stuff in it that needs passing and we've also got some uh, some other things here that need splitting out we've got some prize columns here that got dollars in them and and, and so are the odds so let me quickly take you through how uh, 
how good it Alteryx is at, at grabbing all of that. So we do a bunch of different things. Uh, we pass the URL, we do a bit more passing, um, we clean out race names, etc. So a bunch of different things. We actually add in a time zone offset. So the uh, Morfordville is in Adelaide, so that's all of the date times need to have uh, 30 minutes um, added to them, and Ascot uh, is in Perth, so that needs uh, a couple of hours on top of it. Um, I won't take you through all of the stuff here, but suffice to say, it's, it was quite a challenge to get all of those um, bits of information into a nice clean form, and I'll just show you the end result. So if we have a look at, at uh, the end result for the RaceNet fields, we're actually now have one row per horse, nice and clean. All of the race information is repeated. We have all of those career uh, starts, uh, wins split out. Um, we've got our raw odds there, uh, and we've actually got uh, some stuff. There's the actual odds cleaned up into an, uh, a real number, um, all the way out to uh, the track condition. So that track condition is quite uh, important. I'll, I'll allude to that one uh, just a while. So the other part of this flow is grabbing in the, the race net uh, horse form. And this one was a bit even trickier in that it had one row per race and we actually had to um, make that data nice and tall. So we transposed it out and into uh, a measure names, measure values kind of style. And we did some passing we split all of those out into uh, multiple columns, and then we actually um, did some more stuff here. What do we do? We flatten the data back out again, so that then we can have one column per uh, measure name, and uh, then we're getting down to one row per, per horse. So did a little bit more uh, in passing on that one, and then there's quite a lot of effort to uh, split out all of those. Um, Columns and dashes into into four columns for each one of those, but well worth the effort because I'll show you what uh, we end up with. We pull it all back up into the the race net form final. This is what it looks like in the end. So we've got a horse. We've got uh, all of the, the good information. There's our career starts and wins. But not only that, we've got good starts, wins, and seconds, good thirds, all the different track conditions. That's how uh, the horses do in heavy conditions. And we've got how they do at the same track, the same distance, all of those good information that uh, your punters would want to know about when you're making an informed decision. Uh, and you can see right out to the end there, we've got a bunch of good stuff, uh, including you know what, what their last race date was and uh, things like their average earnings per race. So what do we do with that? We actually join those two data together on um, URL and horse number. Uh, we get we get a couple of things coming out the side there. A bit of some issues with some of the extractions actually. Uh, since we got we missed out on 15, um, 15 horses on Randwick. Was it race five? Uh, for some reason, not too sure why. Dive into that one later on. And then we push all the data out at the end into an MDV table for, for want of having a, a decent database at my fingertips and uh, now it's ready for pulling into Tableau. I'll show you how I use all of that good output uh, to create the old Craig's Bet dashboard. So let's have a look at the data source first. So here's our RaceNet uh, fields and form data set and in here we've got all sorts of goodies. So let's have a look for the uh, the race. We've got the, um, the track. So you can see there's our three tracks. And there's our races. And if we have a look at the horses, we can get uh, the horse name. And we can do things like who is the uh, who's the trainer. And then we can find out for this for this race um, what barrier they're going to be in. And it's interesting. Everybody's in barrier two. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Let's get rid of that one. And let's go and have a look at uh, some measures for these horses. So let's have a look at uh, the, the career. Uh, that's career prize money. So we go down to uh, 
for Randwick. So we've got some big races coming up today. You can see some of these horses have won squillions of dollars. And let's have a look at some, some win rates. So we've got some win rates down here. And if we want to see what their career win rate is, we'll put that in. And I know the track is in good condition today. So um, let's go up to good. And look and see how, how many good wins they've had. And I think we've even got a, a, a win rate there for uh, condition win rate. So that's that's a, a, a an added bonus in there. We've actually got a, a track condition win rate, which I've actually used to determine what the the current condition is for the scrape of today's race versus the, the condition um, in the data set. So so lots of good measures, lots of dimensions, all neat, neatly packaged up into some uh, some folders. So let's see how that all hangs together on the actual Craig's bet is itself. Let's go full screen on this one. So here's one of the big races for today. This is uh, Randwick Race 9, the Doncaster. So it's got quite a big field of horses here. They all are uh, in ascending order of odds. So this guy's the favourite. And we can see all sorts of information there about their last 10 races, who their, um, who their trainer and their jockey is, um, what weight they're carrying on the race, what barrier they're jumping from. Uh, how old they are. You can see some horses here are three years old, some of them are seven year old. And here's how successful they've been over the careers. This is an average earnings per race measure. It's quite uh, an interesting way to look at it. And here's here's their career wins and starts. Actually, that's not their career wins. That's the last 12 months. Let's have a look at the career wins and starts. And you see a lot of these horses are uh, in this uh, race for good reason. Look at all of the place rates. They're all way up there um, above 50% <clears throat> But if we have a look um, So back at the uh, at the last 12 months, you can see those those place rates um, Will be quite different So uh, you can see this this horse here is doing pretty well and Some of these other ones maybe have been struggling. That's why they're out up in the high odds So let's uh, have a look what else we can find out. We can see how many times these horses have run at this track. You can see this guy here, Happy Clapper, is a fan of Randwick. He's raced it 17 times. Um, and how, uh, the, how, what distance is this one? This is a 1600 meter race. So who's who's a specialist at 1600 meters? You can see maybe this, this horse here cracked me up. He's had seven uh, 1600 meter races, won three of them. Um, and you can see the, the blue there is the win versus the, the starts. Now, one of the other things that I've added into this version of Craig's bed is to actually toggle that to just places. So not only do they come first, but you know, when you go places as well, you can see you know, quite a lot of these uh, horses have got um, some, some pretty good success, at least coming first, second or third. And uh, to wrap it up here, we've also got some information about the jockey. So the jockey and horse combination. So um, this particular jockey and this horse very successful. Uh, we go back to wins, let's see how successful they are at winning. <clears throat> so that's, that's a pretty good combination. And here's the the jockey track. So this is actually takes the horse out of the equation. And says how how good. Are, uh, so every time that uh, Barry Shin uh, races at Brand Ricky wins one in three races. That's got to be pretty good. So anyway, lots of good information uh, about the fields and every race for the day at uh, Randwick, Ascot and Morfordville. And I'm going to push this up onto Tableau Public and uh, there's even a mobile friendly version um, that you can, can have a look at if you're uh, at the track itself. And I'm just going to wrap that up now. So thank you very much for watching another Craig's Hack for Tableau. And have a good day. See ya.